Welcome, College Hoops fans, to the 2K Sports Season Preview Show. We're glad to have you along for what's sure to be another outstanding season of College Hoops action. I'm Greg Gumbel, and with me at the anchor desk, my partner Clark Kellogg. We're ready to give you a look ahead to all the ups and downs of the upcoming season, so let's get the ball rolling with the best teams in the nation in the very first Top 25 poll of the season. These are the top five teams in college hoops as we begin the new season. The Kansas Jayhawks are the number one team in the land. The North Carolina Tar Heel have staked a claim to the number two spot. The UCLA Bruins are just behind them at number three. The Tennessee Volunteers come in as the number four team. The Georgetown Hoyas round out the top five heading into the season. So, Clark, what's your initial impression of our top five teams? Those are some terrific teams, Greg, and the thing I find most fascinating about the top five is the number of contrasting styles we see here. These teams couldn't be more different, and I love when we have that kind of diversity at the top of the pole. The Kansas Jayhawks are projected as the favorites here in the early going. They had a nice finish to the year, but it ended with a disappointing loss in the regional final. They were so close to the final four, they could taste it and the memory of that Elite Eight loss should be all the motivation they need this year to work just that little bit harder. We'll see if they can get over the hump this time. The North Carolina Tar Heels are an interesting team in the number two spot. Their total of 31 wins last season was remarkable. Matching that record is going to be a challenge, but they simply got to forget about the past and get to the business of winning games right here, right now. The UCLA Bruins stand out as the number three team in the preseason poll. They're playing in one of the toughest conferences in the nation. How should that affect them, Clark? That'll work to their advantage, Greg, because they'll have been through so many battles by the time March rolls around, tournament pressure won't bother them at all. The Tennessee Volunteers are near the top, ranked fourth as we start the season. They rolled to second place in their conference last year in the regular season. As good as that sounds, I think it was a bit of a letdown for them. They wanted to come out on top, and they probably still have a sour taste in their mouths from not getting it done. The Georgetown Hoyas are in good position as the fifth-ranked team in the nation. They'll be looking to make another run like the one they made last spring, which took them all the way to the Final Four. The players that are coming back are used to playing in that big-game atmosphere, and that gives them a huge edge down the road in March. Here's the next group of teams in our preseason Top 25. What's your impression of that set of teams? With such a long season ahead of us, it's almost impossible to put a finger on just who the contenders and pretenders are from this set of teams. But that doesn't mean we won't try. The Kentucky Wildcats have stirred up a lot of talk in the offseason. They had a terrific record last season, finishing with 22 wins. That 20-win plateau is one of those benchmarks in college hoops that immediately classifies you as an elite team. So they're going to have a tough act to follow. But if they simply play to their potential, they can reach that mark again. The Memphis Tigers have also generated a lot of interest. They'll be trying to build on last season's regular season conference championship. No matter how many different pieces they have this year as compared to last, they'll go into this season with the attitude of we're the champs, and if you want the crown, you've got to go through us. Okay, Clark, let's take a look at the teams that close out the preseason top 25 poll. What do you think of this collection? This is a year, Greg, where I think a few of the teams on this end of the pole really stand out above the others. There are a handful of these teams that are potential sleeping giants. The Texas Longhorn probably deserve a closer look. Their tournament last year came to an abrupt end with a loss in the second round, Clark. It can be demoralizing for a team not to get past the first weekend of the tournament. But they've had all summer to forget about that loss and instead build on the positives from last season. The Stanford Cardinal are also worth keeping an eye on. They're ranked where they are because it's almost impossible to find anything wrong with this team. Nearly every team has an Achilles heel or a weakness, but this team is so well balanced, they're going to be a tough matchup for anybody. We've come to the part of the show when we look at the top players in the nation and unveil the list of our preseason All-Americans. There before you are the five first-team All-Americans as we begin the season, and what a list it is. What's your take on the first teamer at the top of the list, Clark? Shields. He's a tremendous talent, Greg. What I like about him most is his ability to find the soft spot in an opposing defense and exploit it. And he can do it no matter how a defense chooses to play him. I have yet to see a team truly shut him down. As for our next first teamer, the Tennessee Volunteers are more than willing to go into battle with him, Clark. St. Clair is really something special, Greg. There's plenty to like about him as a player. He's got that deadly combination of smarts and physical skills that makes him so difficult to defend. The coach's mentality in the body of a world-class athlete, any questions as to why he's on the list? 
Next up is a player that's drawing comparisons to some of the all-time college greats. The Texas Tech Red Raiders are fortunate to have him in their corner. Ford is a first-teamer without a doubt. He has such versatility. He can take it and rake it, get down the court with the ball and make plays. He'll be a nearly impossible matchup for their opponent. Let's move on to a player who's worked very hard to earn his spot on the list. The North Carolina Tar Heel can depend on a solid effort from him each and every night. Mullen is the anchor of his team, and if they're going to the promised land, he's the one that's going to lead them there. He can make things happen on the basketball court thanks to his unique ability to read and understand defenses while most players are just trying to come up with their next move. He's three steps ahead of the game, and that's what separates the good players from the great. And finally, we have another superb player to round out the first team. The Georgetown Hoya will probably get used to seeing him make the impossible look ordinary. McGowan already has opposing coaches drawing up game plans designed to stop him. But it won't matter what they come up with. Give him too much room and he'll burn you off the dribble. Or play him tight and watch him find a teammate for an easy hoop. One way or the other, he's unstoppable. Now let's move on to the second team All-Americans. Not such a bad list, huh? These elite players all have the potential to have historic seasons if the right pieces fall into place. The Virginia Cavaliers have built their team around this young man's talent. I'd say that's a pretty good idea. Adeleke was a very hard player to leave off the first team. It isn't out of the realm of possibility to say that he might even be a little bit underrated. I know it seems far-fetched to say that about a preseason All-American pick, but I'm not sure people realize just what a huge year he's in for, Greg. The next player on the team is a sensational player in his own right. The Washington State Cougar are in for a great year if he lives up to his potential. Ferris is someone you could look at as last season progressed and see his improvement on a weekly basis. I have no doubt he belongs on this All-American team, and I think the sky's the limit for him this season. We can all look forward to some very exciting highlights from this young man this year. The Wichita State Shocker are looking for a lot of production from him, and they probably won't be disappointed. Horner has terrific skill in so many facets of the game. He can make things happen on the basketball court thanks to his unique ability to read and understand defenses while most players are just trying to come up with their next move. He's three steps ahead of the game, and that's what separates the good players from the great. Our next All-American may have designs on the first team by the end of the season. The UNC Greensboro Spartans have one of the most reliable go-to guys in the country in him. Cleveland was one of the first players that came to mind when I was thinking of the top 10 players in the nation. The success of his team rests directly on his shoulders, and I believe he has the ability to take them all the way to the title. And here we have the final player on our list of All-Americans, the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Know who their fan favorite is going to be this year? Friend is last but not least on the All-American list. His upside is higher than a lot of the other guys here because he has so much raw ability. He could jump to the first team this year if he harnesses all that ability into the complete package. All right, Clark, thanks very much. Glad you could join us for the 2K Sports Season Preview. We hope you enjoy all the college hoops action ahead. Full right of spring, bringing with it excitement and emotion that can be found in no other sporting event. The NCAA Tournament. The wait is finally over, the brackets are ready, and the drama of March Madness is about to begin. Hello everyone, I'm Greg Gumbel and this is the NCAA Championship Basketball Selection Show brought to you by State Farm, the number one auto insurer. Joining me at the anchor desk as always, my partner Clark Kellogg. We're all set to show you the seedings and pairings, so get out your bracket sheet, get those pencils ready. Here are the basics. Of the 65 available tournament bids, 31 are automatically given to conference champions. The tournament committee hands out the remaining 34 bids on an at-large basis. An opening round game will take place on Tuesday night to narrow the field to 64 teams. But before we unveil the brackets for this season, here's a look at the final top 25 media poll of the season. There's at least one change in the rankings to tell you about. One team slipped well down the poll. The Kentucky Wildcats fell all the way from the number six spot to number 11. That's not the direction you want to be going at this time of year, but they're a strong enough team that I believe they can turn it around. The poll voters have had their say in the national rankings since November. Time has come to hand over the reins to the selection committee. And that puts a cap on the final top 25 poll of the year. Now let's take a look at the NCAA tournament bubble and see which teams are sitting at home with their fingers crossed, hoping to see their name in the brackets. There are a lot of worthy candidates among these 10 teams, Clark. Which of these bubble teams stands out to you right now? The George Washington Colonial could have sealed their invitation with a better regular season finish. But the fact is they play in a very tough conference 
and that does weigh heavily in their favor. Point well taken, but they're not the only team sweating it out right now. The UCF Golden Knights had the chance to set themselves apart from the rest of the bubble team, but they never could get over that hump and guarantee themselves a spot. I'm sure it's been a long week for those teams, but the wait's almost over. The NCAA Selection Committee has finished its meeting, and we're ready to unveil the top four seeds in this year's tournament. The Kansas Jayhawks are the top overall seed, and they will play in the Charlotte Regional. The selection committee differed with the media on who the number one team in the country is, but the committee is the important one at this point, and we'll soon see if their faith in this team is warranted. On to the second number one seed, who will play in the Houston Regional. The Tennessee Volunteers are seeking their first ever NCAA championship. The North Carolina Tar Heels are our third number one seed, and they'll play in the Detroit Regional. They're back in the tournament again, and no doubt they'll be feeding off the experience of last year's appearance as they try to get to the Final Four this year. And finally, our fourth number one seed will play in the Phoenix Regional. The UCLA Bruins are in the tournament field as a number one seed for the third time in the history of their program. Now, here's how the brackets shape up based on where the number one seeds have been assigned. In one national semifinal game, the winner of the Charlotte Regional will play the winner of the Houston Regional. In the other semifinal game, the winner of the Detroit Regional will play the winner of the Phoenix Regional. Those games will be played on Saturday, April 5th. Then it'll be on to the national championship game on Monday night, April 7th. Anything shocking to you about those picks? Not really. We talked all week about these four teams being the solid number one seed, and I think the selection committee got it right. There isn't a whole lot of controversy with these picks. So with the number one seeds out of the way, it's finally time to tackle the rest of the brackets. First up, we take a look at the Charlotte Regional. The Kansas Jayhawks are the top seed, finishing at 27 and 5. In the Big 12, they will take on the winner of the opening round play-in game between the High Point Panthers with 12 wins and the Iona Gale from the Metro Atlantic Conference. And now the number eight seed, the Michigan Wolverine, come into the tournament on the strength of a third place finish in their conference regular season and were winners of their conference tournament. They're going to play the number nine seed, the Colorado Buffalo, who were semifinalists in their conference tournament, finishing at 19 and 13. The Indiana Hoosiers enter the field as the number four seed from the Big Ten. It's yet another appearance in the brackets for a school that's no stranger to the NCAA tournament. They'll be getting ready to face the number 13 seed. The Wisconsin-Milwaukee Panthers finished the season with 20 wins. They're the tournament champions from the Horizon League. The Xavier Musketeers come in as the number five seed, finishing at 23 and 10. And they will take on the 12th seed, the Albany Great Dane, from the America East Conference with 17 wins. Next up is the number two seed. The Virginia Cavaliers have established themselves as one of the best teams from the ACC. They'll be going up against the number 15 seed, the Indiana State Sycamore, with 15 wins. This marks their fourth appearance all time in the NCAA tournament. Our number seven seed is from the Horizon League. The Butler Bulldogs had a tremendous year that included a regular season championship. They are going to play the number 10 seed, the UCF Golden Knights, who were fifth in their conference, finishing at 20 and nine. The Duke Blue Devils are in as the number three seed. They'll be taking on the number 14 seed, the James Madison Dukes, with 18 wins. The Michigan State Spartans are in as the number six seed. They'll be taking on the number 11 seed, the George Washington Colonial, with 17 wins. Some of the lower seeds in this bracket have the ability to not only compete with the high seeds, but win a few games. The potential for a Cinderella or two in this bracket is definitely there. Next up, we'll take a look at the Houston Regional. The Tennessee Volunteers are the top seed, finishing at 27 and 6. In the SEC, they'll take on the Colorado State Ram, the number 16 ranked team. This marks their fourth appearance in the NCAA tournament in the history of their school. The Arizona State Sun Devils are in as the number 8 seed. They'll be taking on the number 9 seed, the Pittsburgh Panthers, with 17 wins. The Georgia Bulldogs come in as the number four seed, finishing at 17 and nine. And they'll take on the 13th seed, the Bucknell Bison from the Patriot League with 19 wins. The Houston Cougars enter the field as the number five seed from Conference USA. This marks their 19th appearance in the NCAA tournament in team history. They'll be getting ready to face the number 12 seed, the Davidson Wildcats finished the season with 19 wins. They're the regular season and tournament champions from the Southern Conference. 
Our number two seed is from the SEC, the Arkansas Razorbacks were rewarded for their outstanding play this season with an at-large bid and a ticket to the big dance. They're going to play the number 15 seed, the Belmont Bruins, who came in first in their conference tournament, finishing at 18 and 13. Next up is the number seven seed, the Seton Hall Pirates, have established themselves as one of the best teams from the Big East. They'll be going up against the number 10 seed, the Louisville Cardinals, with 21 wins. They return once more to the very familiar surroundings of the NCAA tournament. The Alabama Birmingham Blazers are in as the number three seed. They'll be taking on the number 14 seed, the Jaguars from IUPUI with 18 wins. And now the number six seed, the Baylor Bears, come into the tournament on the strength of a third place finish in their conference regular season and were losers in their first game at their conference tournament. They are going to play the number 11 seed, the Dayton Flyer, who came in first in their conference tournament, finishing at 21 and 11. This bracket has the potential to give us a sensational matchup in the regional final if everything goes according to form and the top two seeds can survive the early rounds. On to our third bracket of the day. Let's take a look at the Detroit region. The North Carolina Tar Heels are the top seed, finishing at 25 and 9. In the ACC, they'll take on Alabama A&M's Bulldogs, the number 16 ranked team. This will be their second appearance ever in the NCAA tournament. Our number eight seed is from the Big 12. The Oklahoma Sooners were rewarded for their outstanding play this season with an at-large bid and a ticket to the big dance. They're going to play the number nine seed, the Brigham Young Cougars, who were third in their conference, finishing at 22 and 10. The Kentucky Wildcats enter the field as the number four seed from the SEC. It's yet another appearance in the brackets for a school that's no stranger to the NCAA tournament. They'll be getting ready to face the number 13 seed, the South Alabama Jaguar. Finished the season with 16 wins. They're the tournament champions from the Sun Belt Conference. The West Virginia Mountaineers are in as the number five seed. They'll be taking on the number 12 seed, the Tennessee State Tigers, with 17 wins. The Arizona Wildcats are in as the number two seed. They'll be taking on the number 15 seed, the Northwestern State Demon, with 16 wins. Next up is the number seven seed. The New Mexico Lobos are the regular season champion from the Mountain West Conference. They'll be going up against the number 10 seed, the Vanderbilt Commodore, with 18 wins. This marks their 10th appearance in the NCAA tournament in school history. And now the number three seed, the Stanford Cardinal, come into the tournament as the fourth place team in their conference during the regular season and finish second in their conference tournament. They are going to play the number 14 seed, the Robert Morris Colonial, who came in first in their conference tournament, finishing at 18 and 16. The Alabama Crimson Tide come in as the number six seed, finishing at 23 and 11 and they take on the 11th seed, the Tigers of the Pacific, from the Big West, with 20 wins. Looking into the future a little bit, this bracket looks poised for a titanic matchup in the regional final. If the top two seeds can take care of business in the first three rounds, we have the possibility of a classic Elite Eight meeting. And finally, let's have a look at the Phoenix Regional. The UCLA Bruin are the top seed, finishing at 23 and 10. In the Pac-10, they'll take on the Boise State Broncos, the number 16 ranked team. This will be their fifth appearance in the NCAA tournament in the history of their school. Next up is the number eight seed, the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets have established themselves as one of the best teams from the ACC. They'll be going up against the number nine seed, the Penn State Nittany Lions. With 19 wins, this is their ninth appearance ever in the NCAA tournament. The Utah Utes are in as the number four seed. They'll be taking on the number 13 seed, the Southern Miss Golden Eagle, with 18 wins. The LSU Tigers come in as the number five seed, finishing at 22 and nine. And they will take on the 12th seed, the Montana State Bobcats, from the Big Sky, with 17 wins. The Georgetown Hoya enter the field as the number two seed from the Big East. This marks their 25th appearance all time in the NCAA tournament. They'll be getting ready to face the number 15 seed. The Morgan State Bears finish the season with 17 wins. They're the tournament champions from the MEAC. And now the number seven seed, the California Golden Bear, come into the tournament on the strength of a third place finish in their conference regular season and were losers in their first game at their conference tournament. They are going to play the number 10 seed, the Villanova Wildcats, who were fifth in their conference, finishing at 15 and 13. 
the Gonzaga Bulldogs are in as the number three seed. They'll be taking on the number 14 seed, the Yale Bulldogs, with 16 wins. Our number six seed is from Conference USA. The Memphis Tigers were rewarded for their outstanding play this season with an at-large bid and a ticket to the big dance. They are going to play the number 11 seed, the Red Hawks of Miami of Ohio, who came in first in their conference tournament, finishing at 18 and 13. On the surface, I'd have to say this regional might be the most difficult of the four. Certainly the depth of quality teams here is very impressive. Whoever emerges from this bracket will have been through some battles. What are your thoughts on our top 16 seeds, Clark? The Alabama-Birmingham Blazers definitely deserve a better seeding, Greg. I mean, they finished the year as the number three team in the country. I can't figure out why the committee slotted them as a three seed. The Georgetown Hoyas could easily have been a number one seed. They certainly look to me like a team that could be there when the final four rolls around. Now, let's bring the conference picture into focus. The SEC gets seven teams. The Big East with six, five out of the Pac-10. Conference USA gets five teams. The ACC with four. Four out of the Big 12. What a down year for the non-power conferences. We're used to seeing at least one of those conferences compete on the level of the power conferences. But not this year. It's too bad we didn't see more small conference schools in the tournament. None of those conferences got more than one team in the tourney. And I don't expect any David and Goliath stories out of the teams that did get in. I'm surprised there were so few bids for the teams in the A-10. It was an especially disappointing year for that conference. Usually you can count on a few of the nation's elite teams coming out of there. But this was a season where very few of those teams could maintain any type of positive momentum. We showed you the bubble teams before. Now that we know who's in and who's out, what do you think of the selections, Clark? The Villanova Wildcats can finally exhale. I don't think there was a lot of doubt that they'd make it, but we've seen good teams get left out before, and you just know this was a nerve-wracking day for this squad. While they start prepping for their first-round games, the five teams on the other side of the page will be full-time students again. The Boston College Eagles stumble to the finish line coming down the stretch, and that's not the way to close out the season if you're hoping for an at-large bid. When they couldn't get it done in their conference tournament, their goose was cooked. All right, Clark, now that we know all the teams and matchups, time to get the tournament underway and let the madness take over. Greg, it's going to be a fantastic tournament. We've got an outstanding field and a lot of sensational players. I guarantee there are some memorable moments soon to come. For my partner Clark Kellogg and for all of us here in the 2K Sports Studios, I'm Greg Gumbel. Thanks for joining us on the NCAA Selection Show, brought to you by State Farm, the number one auto insurer. Enjoy all the excitement.